Hi, I'm Heath Marshall. I've been a competitive horseman and trainer for over 20 years now. I grew up around horses, and I come from a family of horsemen who taught me everything I know about horse behavior and horse training. Here in Southern Colorado, I've worked with thousands of clients teaching basic as well as advanced horsemanship. One of our most popular techniques that we teach all of our horses entering our training program is the mounting block pick-me-up. This technique is perfect for shorter riders or riders who own very tall horses. Once you have this technique down, your horse should be able to pick you up from just about anywhere you can get some added height, like the back of a trailer or a rock along the trail. We're going to cover everything you need to know to teach your horse this technique in this training film, so let's get started with the mounting block pick-me-up. This is Jay. He's a four-year-old quarter horse gelding. A client brought him to me because she didn't know much about him. She didn't know much about his past training. She uh, decided he was a little bit on the lazy side and was having some trouble moving him forward. So I'm going to work with him today on some essential groundwork. Essential groundwork is just that. It's groundwork that is essential for this horse to know before we move on with his training. For this groundwork, I'll be using my four foot stick, a rope halter, and a 14 foot lead. If you notice, my rope halter has two knots, two extra knots on the nose band here that discourages this horse from leaning against the pressure. All right, let's begin. The first exercise that I wanna work on is having this horse, Jay, disengage his hindquarters. So what I'm doing here is I'm positioning myself on the side of Jay, and I'm just rubbing him with this stick. I don't want it for him to be uh, worried or um, scared of the stick. It's gonna be a tool I'll be using for this training. And when I apply pressure, I'm gonna be applying pressure to his hindquarters, and I'm gonna be asking Jay to pivot on this front foot. This foot here will cross in front of the other back hind foot, but I'm focusing on this foot pivoting in place. When I ask Jay to move, I'm going to suggest that he moves with my body language. If he doesn't move, I'm going to start asking Jay to move. I'm going to start tapping up here in the air and not making contact. And then I'm going to tell Jay to move. And I will start tapping Jay on the hindquarters until he makes that move. Now that he made that move, I'm going to pet him, let him know he did a good job. I'm going to go ahead and ask again. Very nice. And if you watch, you'll watch that right front foot just pivot in place. Right now, in between moves, I'm going to pet him with this stick because what happens is he's going to start second guessing that I want him to move and I don't always want him to be moving when I have this stick out. All right, so now I'm gonna change my body language, ask him to move. Very nice, Jay. Whatever we do on one side, we must do on the other. So I'm gonna ask Jay to move the other direction off of pressure and pivot his hindquarters around. So we're gonna focus on this left front foot is gonna stand and pivot in place. The left rear leg is going across in front of the right rear leg, and that's a good yield of the hindquarters. Pet him with a stick, a little bit of pressure. Very nice, good job, Jay. Right now I'm just asking for one step at a time. Sometimes your horse will spin out. I'm just looking a little bit more controlled. I wanna be able to control this hindquarters. He's walking forward. Walking forward, as soon as he plants and pivots it, then I'm gonna release the pressure. There. There we go. If you notice right there, what he was doing was he was walking forward on me and he wasn't actually pivoting. So until he did plant that left front foot and pivot, I kept the pressure up on him. Gonna ask him again. There we go, very nice. Next exercise that I need to have Jay work on to make sure he does is back up for me. It's important to have a horse back away and out of your space. If I'm standing on a pedestal or if I'm standing somewhere and I need him to back up, this is the exercise I will use. First, I'm gonna be using my stick. A lot of times you see people shake these lead ropes and what happens when you shake a lead rope, 
their heads go up in the air. Of course the horse goes backwards, but I want to keep his head down. So I'm going to use my stick and I'm going to apply pressure in between his legs right on his chest. And I'm going to make a pushing motion with this lead rope. I don't want to have to make contact with it. I'm going to use my stick for that and my body language. So I'm going to ask Jay to move back. He's not moving. Tap him with the stick a little bit. Bring him back forward. Pet him. Backwards again. Good. Right now he's working off body language and a little bit of the stick. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to use my body language and see if he'll come off of it then. He didn't, so I touched him with the stick. Let's try it again. Nice, Jay. Thank you. Good job. One last time. Very good. Now that Jay's going backwards, I want to ask Jay to steer from his tail. So we've already taught him to yield his hindquarters and we've taught him to go backwards. So what I want to do now is ask him to go backwards and then I'm going to put pressure on his hindquarters and have him start turning and following his tail and I'll be in the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to go backwards. Once he goes backwards, I'm going to yield his hindquarters to the right. Backwards, yield the hindquarters, backwards, yield his hindquarters, backwards, yield the hindquarters, backwards, hindquarters, backwards. All right, we're going to go ahead and try it the other way. Backwards, yield his hindquarters. Backwards, yield his hindquarters. See when I'm doing this, I'm actually doing it in two steps. I'm asking him to go backwards and then I'm changing his direction by applying pressure to his hindquarters. Right now I wanna see if I can get him to move backwards and stay moving backwards and then I'm gonna start guiding him from his tail by applying pressure uh, in reverse and on his hindquarters. He's moving backwards. He wants to stop. There we go, there we go, good. Keep him moving. He wanted to go forward on me. There we go. Yield his hindquarters. Backwards, backwards. Hindquarters. All right, good job. A little bit of practice and Jay's gonna get that down really good. The next exercise I'll be teaching Jay is to be able to send him forward and around in either direction. When I do this exercise, I need to um, make sure that I position myself properly so that I can uh, uh, translate that information to Jay and he can understand a little bit better what I'm asking. Whenever we work with a horse and we're putting pressure to get him to move, this area right here is what I consider his driveline. If I'm in this side of his drive line, it's going to encourage Jay to either turn away front end or back up. If I'm behind this drive line, it's going to encourage Jay to move forward. So when I work on this exercise, just kind of remember where your body's at when you're asking your horse to move. So when I ask Jay to move, I want to ask him to move forward and around to my left. I'm going to apply pressure anywhere from his nose all the way to that drive line. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give Jay a direction and I'm gonna point. I want Jay to go left. Jay's looking at me like, what do you want? Okay, so now I'm gonna encourage him to move to the left. 
when he does pick up my stick ask Jay to move left once he starts to move I release that pressure and now I apply pressure behind that drive line that keeps Jay moving forward as you can see he's an extremely excitable horse so this is working really well anytime I want Jay to speed up I'm just gonna apply pressure behind that drive line Now we're going to refer back to our first exercise, which was yielding our horse's hindquarters. When I want Jay to stop, I'm not going to pull on his head towards me to ask him to stop. I'm going to push his hind in. I'm going to push his hind in away. So the same thing is going to apply that we did from the ground at a standstill. I'm going to apply pressure to his hip and ask Jay to plant his left front foot and pivot his hindquarters out. And there we go. Very nice. What I did there was I just stopped my asking him to go forward, applied pressure to his hindquarters, he planted that front left foot, and he pivoted out. Now, I want to ask Jay to go forward and around to the right. So, I'm going to point, give him a direction. He doesn't quite get it, pick the stick up, drive his front end. Once I do that, I work on his forward motion. Once again, when I want to stop Jay, I'm not going to pull on his head. I'm just going to apply pressure to his hindquarters. I'm wanting his right front foot to, to stop, plant, and pivot. Good job, Jay. So the next exercise, now that he's got that down, is I'm going to ask Jay to change directions on the fly. So instead of yielding his hindquarters like I did, I'm going to step in front of that drive line, and I'm going to put pressure opposite of the horse and have him change directions. I'll go really slow this first time so we all can see it. Now in order for me to do that I'm gonna have to change hands. Right now I'm driving him left hand on the lead right hand on the stick. I'm gonna need to change hands Give him a little bit more encouragement here to move forward. I'm gonna change hands with the stick in the lead rope. I'm gonna step in front, apply that pressure to his nose to his shoulder, change his direction. This is slow motion. Ask him to do one more lap here. I'm gonna change hands, step in front, Changes direction. We'll speed it up here, show you what it looks like fast. Yield his hindquarters to stop. Reward him. Now that Jay has these essential skills, we can move on with his training. Now that Jay has completed the essential groundwork portion of his training, I'm going to be teaching him to pick me up from a mounting block. What I'll be needing for this training is a four foot training stick, 14 foot lead rope, and a rope halter. I'll also be using a nice safe fence line for this portion of his training. The reason why I'm using the fence line here is to keep Jay from wanting to walk forward when I apply pressure. If I use the fence line properly and I add pressure, the only option Jay has 
is to come towards me when I apply that pressure. If he doesn't, the fence line will stop him and it'll keep him from doing the wrong response to the pressure. We'll be using uh, the training stick and I will be reaching over Jay's neck and his withers and touching him on his right hind hip and asking him to come off of that pressure. At first, he's probably gonna take a step or two. When he does, I'm gonna immediately release the pressure and reward him for his efforts. Eventually, I'm gonna be able to bring Jay farther and farther and farther and farther until he gets parallel with me at the mounting block. Let's, let's give it a try here. I'm gonna reach over with the training stick and I'm gonna apply pressure over on top of his hip. I don't actually have to touch it, I just gotta point at it, put a little pressure. As soon as he starts to come off that pressure, I'm going to pet him and reward him. And I'm going to use this stick to pet him. I'm going to send him back into the fence. Reward him again. Same thing. I'm going to reach over, apply pressure to the hip. He's going to take a couple steps towards me. I'm going to pet him. Good boy. Now I'm gonna send him back. All the way back to the fence. Good boy. If we don't send him back in between each exercise coming towards me, what's gonna happen is he's gonna eventually just always wanna to come towards you and it's gonna become a bad habit. So I want him to go both ways. He's gonna to come towards me, which I'm drawing pressure, and then I wanna be able to push him back. If you overdo one way, this is what happens is you have a, a, a horse that only moves one direction. Reach over with the stick, a little bit of pressure. If he starts walking towards me, I'm gonna bump him off me a little bit. So all I'm looking for is that hindquarters to move over towards me. Good. And reward him. Send him back. We gave him a little bit farther. Good. Okay, I'm gonna ask for him to come over a little bit more this time. I'm gonna reach over and I'm gonna bring him in and I'm gonna bring him in about three quarters of the way to the mounting block. Good. And as you see, he's sort of starting to uh, put his shoulder towards me a little bit here. So what I'm gonna do on this next time I'm gonna bump him back a little bit, using the lead rope and the rope halter, see if I can discourage that shoulder from coming in at me. Pretty good, buddy, pretty good. If you notice, every time he starts to move, I don't touch him with the stick. If he stops, then I'll put a little bit more pressure with the stick right on his hip. I'm gonna bring him back since he walked off on me. The whole point is him to stand here and wait for me to ask him to go back into position. Good boy. So I'm just gonna pet on him for a little bit here. And let him understand that when he stands here at the mounting block, he's gonna get lots of pets and lots of love. Now, whenever we use pressure and release, we gotta remember that all horses are a little bit different and they handle pressure a little bit different. Some horses are a little bit hotter and they move a lot faster off of pressure and sometimes they move away from pressure or towards it just as fast. Some horses are a little bit lazy and we have to add more pressure to get them to do the moves we want. So when we do this technique, we gotta remember that it's gonna take a lot of patience and a lot of repetition to be able to get Jay to come on over consistently to the mounting block. We'll eventually wean ourselves off of our tools, specifically the training stick. I'd like to have Jay come over by maybe raising my arm or even just looking at him just right and have him come over and pick me up at this mounting block. This four foot stick is to help me get that distance so I can reach. Now I don't necessarily have to actually touch the hip. As long as I'm on the other side of his top line, he should understand that I'm asking for him to come towards me and away from the pressure over there. If he's too far away, what'll happen is I can just reach over and the end of my stick is across his withers and he should be able to feel that pressure just the same as if I was actually touching his hip. 
I'm gonna back him off so I can just show you a little example here. I'm gonna reach over his neck. Stop him walking forward. There we go. As soon as he gave me a step, I released the pressure. Now that he's closer, I can start actually using my left hand to guide this halter and lead and my right hand to guide his hip exactly into position that I want. Once he's here, I'm gonna go ahead and pet him. Move him back into position. Ask again. So you had to increase a little bit of pressure there to get Jay to continue to move. Good boy. So he walked off on his own. I'm gonna bring him back again. A lot of times when we do repetition like this, they start to uh, just kind of uh, second guess what you want and start doing what they think you want. So we're gonna go ahead and reward him now that he's standing here and um, I won't send him back until I'm pretty sure he's just gonna stay. So we are using a pressure and release technique. And whenever we use pressure and release, we've gotta remember that the horse does not learn from the pressure, he learns from the release of the pressure. So the faster we can release the pressure, when the horse does something right, the faster he's gonna learn. So when I ask Jay to come over, I'm applying pressure, I'm releasing the pressure. Apply the pressure, release the pressure. Now that he's in position, I'm gonna reward him for standing here and being calm. If your horse has got a special spot he likes to be scratched, it's a good time to take advantage of that right now. Jay just likes it anywhere. He just likes attention. If sometimes they get a little bit panicky. Plus if they're a little bit claustrophobic too, they're coming in towards the fence and me and it's just, they're not comfortable being here. So I really want them, when they do get here, I want to really take advantage of that. All right, so I want to send Jay back. So if we remember, every horse learns a little bit differently. This could take 10 minutes, it could take 45 minutes. The key is to be patient and consistent and reward your horse every time he comes over and does it correctly. So what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna start taking a little bit of less pressure away with this stick. I'm gonna be asking, but I'm gonna try not to have to touch Jay with the stick. I'm gonna put it up over his back, a little bit of pressure, magic wand style. And that's our first step in weaning Jay off needing this stick for pressure. Send him back. Well, the more consistent we are, we're using our stick or our hand and our verbal cues, the faster he's gonna get it. Our ultimate goal is to be out there on the trail or anywhere you are, and just to be able to either raise your hand, make a kissing noise or a clucking noise, whatever your favorite noise is, to ask your horse to do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the stick down here, put my hand up in the air, Perfect, wonderful. Some horses are gonna be a little bit hot and they're gonna come in a lot faster and they're gonna pick up on moving their feet a lot more. And they're gonna be more willing to, be, to come off that pressure and come in. And then you've got horses, uh, let's say Jay here, who's about in the middle of the road, You're not too excitable, not too lazy. Uh, he comes in about where I want. And then you get the lazy horses. So if you've got that lazy horse, it's gonna be a whole lot more pressure uh, you got the the higher strung horses you're looking at a whole lot less pressure uh, so basically j fit right in the middle here um, we just got to be just consistent we're going to be asking asking pushing asking pushing until he gets it right now he's doing really well i think he's he's got it pretty good so 
and I'm gonna take him over here and away from the fence line and we're gonna take him out to the middle of the arena and I'm gonna try it without a stick and see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna send Jay out in front of me. Get him in position. Ask him to come on over. Perfect job. Good job, Jay. So as you can see, we've spent about a half an hour today working with Jay on uh, picking me up at the mounting block with consistent pressure and release using this technique and asking him to come over and releasing the pressure and giving him lots of reward uh, with the petting and, and lovings that we can give him. Um, he picked it up really fast. He's um, picking me up in the middle of the arena and that's a, that's a good stopping point for today and I'll, I'll pick it up later in his training and ask him for more later. Now that we finished this first training film, hopefully you'll see how the essential groundwork training and the fence line training gave us the steps necessary to teach Jay to do the pick me up technique. When you begin this training with your horse, it's important to remember that you may need to take a day or two to repeat this training until your horse fully understands what you are teaching. Now some horses will take longer than others, but as long as you're patient and consistent while teaching each portion of this training technique, you'll get great results from your horse. A lot of what we taught is gonna give you better control over your horse in general, but in the end, it's up to you to use these building blocks to achieve the best possible result. I'd like to thank you for purchasing this training film, and I encourage you to check back with us often at heathmarshallhorsemanship.com or follow us on Facebook for updates and tips on building a better relationship with your horse.